futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your agriculture update for a very wild trading day today on Wednesday. And this is the uh, 15th of August, 2018, just after 2.33 p.m. Central Daylight Time. About 15 minutes ago, I was on the floor doing a show for Fox Business News. And if you watched, great. But basically, I was saying this is a win for President Trump. Our markets are holding up, world markets coming down, our trade partners in trouble, those against us like Iran, Turkey, they're feeling the brunt of American trade power and what sanctions can do. Will that bring anybody to the table and change their nature? I don't know. But he's trying. That's where I leave it. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's what's going on. You had a big break today in the energies in part, and that affects corn and other markets because of ethanol and so on. Uh, and that's because we saw bigger builds in the energy. Plus, India and China aren't buying as much oil as they did before. When we look at the grains, you wouldn't even know there's carnage going on elsewhere in the corn market, pretty unchanged. But the wheat down, soybeans down, cocoa was down, coffee was down, cotton down, sugar down. You're going to see a number of markets got hit. Dollar didn't go anywhere today, nor did most of the other currencies. You did get bids in the bonds and notes, but nothing stellar. Come on, eight ticks in the note? It's like a normal trade day, so don't put that on the market. It's not what's going on. When we look at a weekly area chart of closes in soybeans, keep in the back of your mind, you came off a low of 814, got up to 886, and you're getting a correction from there. Will the market go back and test that low is the question that is the million dollar question right now, or is the market gonna be able to get over 886 again and try to hone in on the 18 day average of closes? When we get away from the weekly charts, which by the way, we're up 11 and a half for the week, you see that you're getting a pattern here where the market's starting to slip away on you. And when I mark those highs, because we have a high here that is higher than this one, we have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. That is bearish. To break the bear pattern of a downtrend, and that's the definition that most of us use, lower highs, lower lows to define a downtrend, on this particular pattern right now, you'd have to take out 914 and a half, which will not prove that easy unless there's some overnight news that all of a sudden China and the U.S., for example, got back together on trade. That doesn't seem to be what's happening. When you're under an 18-day average of closes, which is this red line with prices through here, it is not uncommon for the markets to try to get back to that number to figure out what to do. And that was what this attempt at this rally was. I think it was trying to figure out what to do. It didn't quite make it there. And if the market takes out today's low tomorrow, it'll resume the pattern of the lower highs, a new lower high, and we'll see if it can take out that low. The trend is down. Resistance is back up at a combination of first the 18-day average in the upper Bollinger Band, and then the lower Bollinger Band offers the support. That comes in at 853 and a half. Interesting number because this break low right here is 851 and a quarter. So is the old low against the Bollinger Band going to offer the support? It's not bullish. Is it going to offer temporary support? Bears are in control. And momentum, as you can see, you're still not in oversold condition. I define on the slow stochastic reading a reading on either number, the K or the D, the red or the dark number, under 30 as being that. You're not there quite yet, so momentum down, bias down because you're under the 18-day average, and the trend down. In the meal market, you have a market that is not trending. It is, if you will whirling around within the upper and lower Bollinger Band. That's what you're doing. You have a pattern of a lower low and a higher high. Trying to catch these breaks or trying to catch the rally means you've got to trade against the trend. What do I mean by that? To catch this move that moved down here, you'd have to be selling the highs. Well, why are you selling over the 18-day average? That's my first question. Or trying to buy under it to get up there. It doesn't make sense. You had one minor play here that carried into a trend. But since then, and I'm talking since the end of July and the way that I teach charting, this market's just spinning around and hurting traders. 
in the soybean oil, you've reinstituted a bear trend, but you did it in a way right into the lower Bollinger Band. The importance of that is markets typically don't trade under Bollinger Bands more than 5% of the time. One day under is not that 5%. It takes away one, the way I mark 5% of the time. When you get consecutive days under, each one of those points are one of those numbers. Keep that in mind when we look at cotton. In the corn market, you have a pattern of a higher high and a lower low, so it's not a trend. As I said before, it's not uncommon for markets to make a run for the 18-day average of closes, that red line, to figure out what do they want to do next. Momentum is flat. It's going sideways. The bias is down. The trend is down. The bears still have control of the market, and if they could break it again, maybe they can get it to 366 and a quarter. Under the current pattern, why do the bears have control? Just because the bias, no more than that. It's not a trend trade. They just have control in the sense that you've got bias down. The trend still is higher, high, lower, and low. In the wheat market, the trend is down. You have a pattern of lower highs, lower and lows. I think you'd agree with that. You're under the 18-day average, however. You are oversold as can be. See the difference here? You've got a reading under the 30 level. So, danger. That's the way I'd look at it. In the sugar market, danger again oversold, lower highs, lower lows. This market's trying to do something a little different. It's trying to run the lower Bollinger Band. By running, I mean trying almost every day of the past uh, three, four days in a row to hit that number and not get away from it. That's a bearish pattern, but one that is still in an oversold condition. In the coffee market, Lower highs, lower lows, similar to sugar. This market keeps running, not getting away from that lower band and coming right back to it. Very bearish pattern in the market, and it's all been down for a very long time. You've had no sideways action to deal with. Cocoa just recently started trading more in a sideways pattern, but it is staying oversold. It's not in an uptrend. It's not in any trend. You now have a higher high and a lower low. The bias is down. Very difficult. Cotton, as I said, has four days in a row under the lower Bollinger Band. That gives the market, in my estimation, a 1% chance tomorrow of staying under it if you follow my rule of thumb that each consecutive close under a lower Bollinger Band takes away one of those five percentage points. So the logical question should be, what if you go six? then you go six. What if you go seven? You go seven. But go back and do your own work. You find how often you get to seven. You're going to be very surprised. They're very rare. That does not mean you're a buyer. It just might mean if you're in a downtrend, maybe there's a better sell point. In the cattle market, you have the pattern of a higher high and a lower low. It's clear that the, the support came in at the combination of the lower Bollinger Band and the 100-day average of closes. You actually went to the combination of those numbers. If you look at it over the past uh, last week, and then you again broke out of it. The, uh, on Monday, you tested it. Tuesday and now Wednesday, you're getting a little bit of a lift. You are still oversold without a trend. Feeder cattle has a different pattern than the live cattle. It has a pattern where the swing line has got higher lows and higher highs. However, the market is oversold and the bias is down since you're under the 18-day average of closes. It's a bear market rally so far. Could turn into something more, but that's what it is as I define it. Now, this morning, one of the things I was doing when I did my subscriber video, and that's when I put out my own research for the people that are subscribers to my research, what I had done with that is I was showing them where I thought the hogs were going to have a battle. I thought the hogs would have to fight and hold the 18-day average of closes and not get under this low right here of 5080. And the reason is the market had a pattern of higher lows and already had the higher highs. And as you can see today, it fought right at that number, came back, and now the question is, could it make a run to the upside? The reason I say that is you still have the higher lows, higher highs, upside bias since you're over the 18-day average, momentum pointing higher. That all falls apart if you either take out 50, yesterday's high, which was 52.92, and then bust through today's low again. It's about the only thing I can see to hurt it, or don't take that out and get under right here, this uh, 50.80 level again, and not take out that high. In other words, just open lower tomorrow and go. That could be a problem too for the bulls. But right now the bulls did their job of supporting the market where they had to.
You know, if you were watching TV earlier in the day and financial TV, you saw the stock market falling apart and people going, uh, 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 uh. Well, you're in the last 15 minutes or so of trade. It doesn't look to me like anything other than a normal trade day, not one to get overly nervous about. I, I really got to tell you that. This is when the VIX goes crazy at this time of the year. But if you're an ag trader, and that's what this is about, really not impacting it all that much. One of the things we do is we write on all these different categories with different people. This is not what I, my own research. This is our Linen Associates research. Where if you're an options trader, a derivative trader, you're looking to see hedging. This is the specialty of this firm. I mean, we work with big firms, we give them trade ideas, and you get to see it if you're one of our customers. How do you get it? Well, it's pretty simple. It's a free trial. All you need to do is either give us a call, go to our website, and when you go to the website, you can sign up for the categories you want to see. If you haven't tried it before, you can click up here as well. This icon will take you right to that page. In the meantime, I'm Ira Epstein. You have yourself a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.